Here we're looking over the wall at 32 High Street at the river mouth, at the peak of high tide. There's very little flow in the river because it's being held back by the sea and few if any solid and waves are being developed. There are no marine waves entering the river and going up the river at all, despite the height of the tide and the storm conditions at the sea. When I zoom in now a few short time later, you can see the river is gaining momentum. Still no waves going up the river, but when the marine waves surges in, enough to halt the flow, the mouth of the river piles up and results in solid and waves being caused flowing back up the river when the flow of the river is halted. Here we see a solid and wave approaching the road bridge. Now when I move down to the beach so that we can see the river mouth, you can see that the river is flat and very little happening at all. And this can be for quite extended periods. But then as the, develop, as the velocity in the river develops and we get enough wave power to halt it at the river mouth, suddenly you'll see the solid and wave being created. The conditions are not the best here, and so that last wave died before it re really got going. But here's a, a slightly bigger one, and what I found over the time I've been doing observations is that the wave formation actually gets greater as the sea level reduces because when the mean sea level is lower the river develops this greater velocity and it is definitely the combination of velocity at the river mouth and the ability of marine waves to halt it at the river mouth and create this sudden surge in height and the reverse of flow that causes the solid and waves to go rushing up the river. It can be remarkably extended periods between wave action, but then you can sometimes get the right conditions to generate waves fairly close together. Here we have a bigger wave being formed, a big enough surge in the sea to halt the river flow and reverse it and then here we have them rushing up the, the river. You'll notice the whole flow of the river is going in reverse. Now we have to wait. The so river here is practically halted, but as it gathers, gathers momentum, so we're more likely to get another solid and wave being developed and rushing up the river. The bigger waves on this afternoon while I was filming this were going over the wall round the garden below the bridge at the chip shop and over the next two gardens as they went up the river.
you're three or four ways past and then you're back into flat water again but as I said as the tide is going out so the f conditions to develop solid and waves increases until it reaches the point where the marine waves can't halt the flow of the river within the confines at the river mouth. See the water here virtually stationary. beginning to gather momentum now. There we have the conditions. It's stopped the flow of the river and the solid and wave comes roaring up. It is undoubtedly the narrow parallel walls of this channel that allows the development of solid and waves. It almost replicates precisely the conditions that Harriet Watt University used to show the development of solid and waves for their educational program. These waves could not develop in the river if it was a natural river mouth with the wave energy expended on the beach and only the marine waves encountering the flow of the river but not being confined between these parallel walls. Here we have quite a big one developing now as the tide is going out, as I said, the waves tend to be greater height and velocity when they occur, although they might be quite a time between, but you'll see how the whole river is virtually flowing up the river again with the wave. As the wave progresses, so the river halts behind it and then gradually begins to gather momentum flowing seaward again. Again, the length of periods between waves illustrating that this wave action in the river is entirely independent of marine waves.
See how much more freely the river is flowing now, round now that the tide has retreated a bit. But it still has the capacity, even when the tide is this far out, to halt and create a solid and wave descending, rushing up the river again. It's the fact of halting the river and with the velocity of the river and all the water flowing down the river it simply piles up and once it reaches a certain height then it sets off the wave action coming back up the river. The stormy sea conditions and the waves surging on the beach are continuing all the while and yet it's only when the velocity of the river is allowed to increase that you get the development of these waves. You can see how far back the tide has ebbed now and yet this is still capable of creating a solid and wave if they just have enough height in the marine wave to halt the flow of the river into the sea. The retreating tide now has almost reached a level where it's finding it impossible to, to halt the flow from the river. <laughs> 